boom, that arm's so much bigger than Adam's. Anyway, we're going to give you guys a free workout program in today's episode. We give away free programs all the time because we're giving people. We're such good people. Here's what you get for free today if you enter our contest. All you have to do is leave a comment below in the first 24 hours. Tell us why my arm is so much better than Adam's. Make a nice explanation. If we pick your comment, you'll win free access to math performance. It's the veins! You also have to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. One more thing. We're running a sale on two workout programs, MAPS Hit and the No BS Six Pack Formula, both 50% off. Go check them out. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code July Special with no space for that discount. All right, here comes your favorite show. Tell everybody why they call you Two Finger Shader, uh, Schaefer. <laughs> two well, Finger Schaefer. Where'd you get that nickname? Finger Blaster Master. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's really what they called me. <laughs> hey, remember Hey, remember the other day we were coming up with uh, stripper names for each other? What do we say that? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, Justin was- uh, Pound Cake. Oh, yeah, yeah, pound cake. cake. Welcome Doug, to the stage. Doug was honey pot or, you were honey toy, or toy, toy, toy boy or what'd that you call it? That was toy Doug. Boy. <laughs> yeah, what'd you that call was it? boy toy. Yeah. Boy toy you, was You're Doug. like cinnamon tits or something. Yeah, he called me cinnamon Schaefer. Yeah. You're cinnamon, cinnamon Schaefer. Schaefer. And you were- uh, Synergy. Synergy Sal. Yeah. Here comes Synergy, Synergy Sal. Synergy. I don't know why I'm Synergy, but it makes me do this right here. Yeah. Oh. my hips a little bit. <laughs> Yours is the least stripper. It is. I, I don't have so. a very good. I like pound cake and boy toy. I mean, Doug. I get straight to the business. Yeah. I feel I, like maybe Honey Pot Sal is for you. I like Honey Pot. I just feel like that's a You're good. more like a Honey Pot. I like mm. Honey Pot? Pound cake is appropriate because I feel like if Justin did oh, a lap. Yeah, that's, as accurate. <laughs> that's about as accurate as it gets right there. Because if he did a lap dance, he'd be the one that breaks the chair. You know? Like, yeah. Are you ready for the pound cake? powdered sugar that's flying <laughs> but hey, I'm done. As soon as you walk out to stage, yeah. you throw it in the air. <laughs> I'm just clapping and then just, you know. <laughs> not with uh, your hands. What, if you, not with what my hands. would you be a special move? Like everybody has a special move. What is your just a special <laughs> move? Uh, uh, the jackhammer? Just pound you to the wall. <laughs> you the know, jackhammer. Just backwards. Just backwards wow. pound. Well, that's terrible. I don't know. It's, All right, it's let's start really the show, aggressive. Doug. Let's start the show. It is Doug, started. Doug. Oh, this is Doug. Doug's it's like, on right no now. No way. Oh, we have to talk about God. fitness. Huh? We talk about fitness. We do? Tell All me right. your fitness. That's okay. We're going to keep that in, Doug, but we will talk about fitness. Actually, I was going to ask you guys a question. Do you guys have an exercise that has been your favorite since you first started working out? Oh, good question. You know? Like a favorite exercise. Like one exercise that you just you loved when you were younger, mm -hmm. you wow. still love today. Well, I mean, it's, I'm so typical, but it's got to be bench, dude. Yeah. Yeah, or overhead press. Those are my homies. You, you know love what? Those from day one. And Forever. They just never stop. I don't know if I... Maybe preacher curls, mm. because I, I have to say, most of the things I actually love today, I hated before. Mm. That's a true story. Like, a lot of yeah. the, the train... Like, I love deadlifting and squatting now. Squats I now, dreaded yeah. those yeah. growing up. I never did them. Um Never been a big fan of bench press. It's always been a challenging exercise for me. I I liked rows, and I still like rows. Yeah. So that maybe that I like heavy rows. I got I got really good when I was younger at like rowing really good. I was you know what it is. It's always what you're good at. Of course <laughs> it is. Dude. I was I ne the first time I grabbed a seated row, yeah. I could do decent weight compared. Yeah, like to I'm my not going to be like calf raises. Oh. Okay. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> Whoever said that. I was rows too. Loved them. Oh, really? Yeah, from day one. Barbell, dumbbell row, yeah, cable row. Yeah, I, I could get down with it. Yeah, you dumbbell row, seated row. Uh, I could pull. I found that dips. out really early. I could yeah. pull. You see, I hated I dips. I love dips. You know, the first time, I'm not going to forget the first time, uh, remember the gym, everything I was at when my buddy showed me a dip. Never even seen a dip as a, a tricep building exercise until this moment. And he hops up there and he gets, and I think he pumped out like 10 real quick. And I couldn't do one. Mm. I couldn't do one body weight dip and i probably weighed about 170 pounds at that time it was wasn't very heavy um but I, yeah it was hard dips yeah. were dips were hard first for time i did dips was uh at a park you know they have sometimes they have those bars that are yeah, run to each other bars and, and there's like these uh like fitness tests sometimes in these parks where you know like one of them is you have to walk across the bars with your arms have you seen these they'll have like a picture next to the apparatus like they'll yeah. have the the wood plank where you can do sit up and you can tell that it's for the school it's usually at a school yeah yeah totally and there was one where there were two bars that were parallel to each other and you were supposed to walk across them yeah uh -huh. and that's the first time i ever tried doing dips yeah and i never felt dips where i was supposed to early on i felt them in my triceps never could really feel them in my chest mm. later on I, I so i gave up on them for chest i do them for triceps sometimes i had a buddy who said 
if you lean forward, you'll yeah. feel it more in your chest. And one way that I did this was I would hang a chain over my neck. This is way before you saw bodybuilders doing this. This was something actually, never mind. Way bodybuilders Instagram. did do this back in the day. So I did. I put a chain over my neck, and it made me lean forward more. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is a different so, exercise. So, okay, when you do dips, both of you, this question, when you do dips, do you typically do it uh, for your chest or on chest day, or do you do normally do it for triceps? In the past, it was triceps. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see me doing dips, it'll be on a chest day. And you? I'd both. Yeah. Yeah, I do both. I do, yeah, well, but I'll which do, one more are you like? Because I probably lean one way more than the other. Oh yeah, probably more on arms. Yeah, yeah me too. Arm day, yeah, I, I, even though it can, I totally agree. It could be a, a very good, like the, where it'll be on chest day for me is like if I if I don't feel Super like doing decline flies yeah. or I don't feel yes. like doing a decline at the end. Yeah, uh, exactly. If I don't have, feel like doing a decline press or some of that, then and by that time at the end of the workout, I'll be pretty taxed. Yeah, and so the body weight is enough I to probably love supersetting bench with dips. Oh, oh my God! It would just blow me. You out. know what else is a good superset? Hmm. Uh, fly to dips. Try that oh, out. I bet. Yeah. Pre-exhaust oh. your chest, then go to dips. Yeah, you'll feel that. Flare the elbows out to hit more chest. Lean forward, and then when you come up, squeeze like you're doing a cable crossover. What a great cue and video for Andrew right there. You know, talk about. I always always forget these little nuggets for uh, YouTube videos. These are always the videos that do the best, and I don't think we've ever done that. How to make a a dip better for chest? How to make a dip better for tricep? Yes. That advice right there is is clutch. So if you're doing it for more chest, yes, flaring the elbows and leaning forward, mm -hmm. way more chest activation and deep, right? Real real deep elbows flared and leaning forward and uh, less emphasis on the lockout and extension. Mm -hmm. Opposite true for triceps. Mm -hmm. Lean up, lean back a little bit, elbows tucked in, most the emphasis on the complete flexion extension yes, portion of it. Yes, so, yes. It's a, good, yeah, it's a yeah. good time. It's also a good exercise you can load with bands. So you could put a band around yourself, like around your neck, maybe attach it to a heavy dumbbell underneath you. <laughs> wait, wait, did you just say put a band around your neck around and then the a dumbbell? Around the back of your neck. I'm not doing some weird, you know, a choking thing. A dumbbell? Wait, wait. You're so saying you a, put band the, you put a band around your, your neck the bottom, and then and you, you, you anchor a, it on a heavy dumbbell. Yeah. Oh, I have I've never done that before. You've yeah. done that? Yeah. Yeah. I've so never done that. So it's it's a band resistance. Yeah, I get it. I get and, it. Yeah, I get so it. So you get the picture yeah, yeah. of what it is. Yeah, I just had never seen anyone do that. And I've never thought to put a band around my neck and mm -hmm. then hang a dumbbell yeah, underneath it. I mean, typically you use bands for assistance in that situation. Yeah. Dips, Let's like, not do one of those uh, videos, Andrew. Actually, we'll <laughs> skip that one. <laughs> no, it's not bad if you set it up right. I've done it before. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty. Yeah, no. It feels I'm, good. I don't it does. I don't even think I've ever seen anyone do that. Band loading machine weights, whatever, it gives you a, a completely different feel. Totally different feel when you put bands on anything. You Well, you've said it before on the podcast, and I agree with this, is that, uh, and it's why the trigger sessions I find so uh, effective in the programs, is that it doesn't seem to do as much damage. Yes, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So like if I, because it's that progressive resistance that it provides, right? Because when you take a band, the further you stretch it out, the harder the resistance gets, right? So if you're doing a bench press and you put bands on top of the weight that you're lifting, it's lighter at the yeah. bottom, harder at the it top. It increases at the most intense part of the strength curve. Yes. Now, you can do this with chains too, right? Because chains, as at the bottom, more of the chain is on the floor. You're lifting less weight. As you lift, the links come off the floor and it gets heavier. So it's supposed to be similar, but chains wreck my body way more than bands do. Way more. I get yeah, way more damage. More clunky, you know, using them. But yeah, I, I do enjoy using. I, I like using chains. I think more with like deadlifts or like sometimes we use it with squats. But even I still prefer bands. I think I with do. squats. Yeah, I do. Now, have you ever tried this with chains? And this can be get real fun. It's complicated. It, it's kind of a pain in the butt to set up. But you can set up chains so that it's got stages of dramatic increases in weight. So in other words, you have to measure it, and it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, but you get a long chain. So like bunch them up? So you yeah, like so your parts? So, yes, yeah. so at the bottom it's light. Then you hit a certain point, and then it picks up a weight with the chain. It gets real heavy, but then mm -hmm. it's and then that's it. And then another one comes up. So you get like these – like it's stages – of heavier and heavier oh, weights oh, as no, you lift. I've never done that. Yeah, it feels really good. It's oh, it's I love I love squatting with chains. Squatting with chains is one of my favorite things to do. Deadlifting with chains, not so much because the dump the the Weight weights always the, hit the chain. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's true. That's annoying. Yeah, so I rather deadlift with bands. I love it. I love deadlifting with bands. Um, and, and by the way, we're saying that right doesn't mean I do that all the time. I think that's yeah. important. I do it maybe once a month. Yeah, to be I, I tend to do that with like light deadlifts. So I'm working more on just speed. Yeah. Uh, with that, but yeah, I do like to throw them on every now and then. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so I had a, a old man moment. You ever catch yourself doing something and you're like, well, yep, this is, means I'm old now. <laughs> so, you know, we're moving, right? We're moving into a new place. Yeah, yeah. And so I can't find anything. So I'm looking for stuff and I'm like, oh, where is this? 
And I got so excited because I found something that I really wanted. It was my nose hair trimmers. <laughs> yeah. I literally got so pumped. I'm like, oh, there they are. I really needed these bad now, boys. Now, did your wife buy those for you? Or did you uh, am I just the only one that uh, she's <laughs> the always like, okay, here's your present because you don't ever do this. Really? She buy you that yeah. as a gift? Like hygiene stuff. That's I good. don't know what it is about <laughs> like, once damn. as a man, like over, once you hit like 35, I think it is, the hair in your nose and your ears goes turbo yeah all dude. of a sudden it grows you, like you Medusa. become a wolf it's the it's crazy well, and now we're are you guys the type that you remember seeing like your grandfather or somebody who's like in their 70s oh, yeah. and they've got the hair like growing <laughs> out of their ears and way yeah. out of their nose and you saw them like oh my god i'll never let that happen ear. to me or you just are you the type they're like eh, when i'm 70 fuck it whatever where oh, are you I, where do you where are you at in that i almost don't care Probably now. the latter so who knows when i'm gonna be 70 i'm definitely not gonna give oh yeah. Wow, yeah see i've cared yeah. always so I'm, i katrina never had to give me that stuff i was already on it i remember the first time like i saw it i can't remember what i was doing oh the sun like hit it just oh. right like Looked at the reflection of the mirror and like the car or something like that. Like looking at look cars behind me, and I think I saw like fuzzy ears or something. Uh, <laughs> like, you know what's annoying what to me? That? Dude, I didn't even know started, I had fuzzy yeah. ears. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Like she, like Courtney just started pointing out that I have like new hairs on my back, and I'm like I can't see it, so I had no idea. And she's just like, "No, you have." I'm like, "No, it's probably like peach fuzz. I've never had hair on my back." She's like, no, it's like and it's like, and then she'll just start like doing this and like feeling it there and I could feel it. I'm like, Oh no, like it's happening. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm becoming a, a beast. Well, so here's a little, like this has got to be evolutionary, but I, this is my experience. Women love pulling out random hairs and squeezing shit out of your skin. Yeah. yeah. This is literally, I'm not exaggerating. It's primal this. dude. This is one of Jessica's favorite things to do in life. Yeah. It's her favorite thing. Look at Dr. Pimple Popper, dude. Oh, like, so I like, can't watch that. It blew Mil up. Million, like, millions of people it. viewing it, right? Has her own like TV show now. All she does is like explode these disgusting pus bags. Oh, That's so weird. Yeah. Jessica loves that. You know what I think is weird about that is that my girl is disgusted by so many like other random things, and I find that so repulsive. But they get like really into like that like, is like, if like you looked over me like, hey bro, could you get this pimple on my back real quick? What the hell? I would. That throw up in my mouth. That is one hundred percent. That would and destroy our relationship. Even more so if like Justin went and did it for you, and I'm watching. <laughs> that, Here, but bro, I got you. <laughs> we're, look, we're really good friends. That would be one thing that would probably destroy our friendship. If, I, if you yeah. squeeze the pimple between on. that and interlocking toes. Like, so, <laughs> yeah, I gotta set standards. I might do that just to mess with you, but <laughs> no. I, I do. I find it weird that oh, no. other things like are repulsive to her, but then something like that is just it's totally. Dude, not. she did that the other day. I was yeah, I had my shirt off, and she goes, "Oh, you've got some like." blackheads on your back and stuff. Let She's me like, get them for you. Can I please do And I'm like, no, because yeah. it's fucking hurts, dude. You yeah. pull shit out. You yeah. pull hairs out. It hurts. Don't be such a baby. Who cares? Uh -huh. So I'm like, fine. I'll let you do this. And I'm watching TV and I swear to God for an hour. She's having a great time. At some point, I tell her stop. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm like, can you stop? It's, like it's hurting me. And, she, and she's like telling me like this, like please, like yeah, almost my, like my about, hands are tired. I'm gonna use my mouth now. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh. sorry, oh, too much. I know. <laughs> Disgusting. I can never it. see. But I, it makes me. Again, it dude. makes me think of uh, monkeys. You ever see monkeys? Oh when yeah, they're doing the clean the, the shit. Them, it's old chip stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, she's on my back, and I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you so excited about this? Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, disgusting. Weird. But I have like with my kids because like we live in the woods. I'm always looking for ticks and stuff. But I found a few like that were just like scurrying. Ugh. You know, I grabbed like so I've I've been able to find a few of those, which was satisfying. Oh, so, <laughs> kill all kill the ticks. stupid things. What's that conspiracy theory about ticks that they? There's a conspiracy. Yeah, theory about there ticks. is, dude. Yeah, of course, you guys would know this. Um, yeah, so it was on. It was somewhere I think off the, the, the really? East Coast, like I don't know, New Jersey kind of area where um, I don't know what the conspiracy completely describes, but that basically it started, uh, it, you know, some kind of it, it transferred over into these ticks and then they got out from, uh, you know, deer. Okay, what's the, yeah, what is the conspiracy? No, no, no hold on. Through, what's, the, what's the disease you get? Lyme, you get? Lyme, Lyme disease. Lyme, okay. no, Lyme disease. That right, Lyme right. was, was a, created in a lab, was it, the conspiracy. It was weaponized. Yeah. And uh. they, they tried to isolate these ticks on an island to test it out. And they got to the mainland. Yes, and the reason why we have Lyme disease is because... Oh. It, because it spread out and, because the animals, you know... And now, have you contained. guys read enough about this that it's got a very compelling story behind I mean, it? Or is it like... Well, oh, if you trace it back, you see a pretty condensed amount of cases, you know, starting in the East Coast. But 
I mean, mm. again, it's yeah. Lyme disease. Lyme yeah. disease on Plum Island. Fringe mm. conspiracy theory or government cover government up? cover up? Yeah, I don't you know. be the judge. Oh, boom, boom. Interesting. Yeah. There's a thing. There's actually a website called TikTok. Oh, what? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Uh, so clever. Oh my god. <laughs> I see what you tick yeah. is in T I C K talk to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. How many times like somebody finds their way onto this website <laughs> right. they're just like, Where's all the dancing? <laughs> it's <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> it's bullshit. I do you I think can't stand okay, do you think I I'm, I'm I am very fascinated by by the, the, the TikTok movement or whatever. Like by that. the way, my dad says ticks wrong. He says tits. Just that He says tits. Yeah. He'll be like, Don't you got any tits on you? Oh, we'll go hiking. He'll be like, Hey, yeah. hey kids, be careful for the tits. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, there's tits out here. And I'll be laughing. I'll be like, what are you talking about? Your teenage boy lights up. Yeah. What? 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 No, 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 I can find tits out here. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, the, the, this TikTok phenomenon, right, is... Do you think we're going to look back in 20 years and like, this is going to be one of those things that we kind of laugh about ourselves as like a society that this was like this? Bro, you know what, you yes. know what it is? It's like, it's line dancing, but now like accessible to everybody. Like it's the same formula you saw going to weddings where you get the stupid chicken dance. Yeah. And everybody like just... Because it, it's all prescribed for them. They have like really, like really cheesy moves that they're all like. Yeah, but trying. they also sing along to songs. They'll have a song. No, and they don't they'll, sing. They just, they'll, they'll sing. They just lip it. sync. Well, lip, that's what I mean. Yeah, most popular thing though on there, I think, or right? I actually can be totally wrong, but I'm, I assume the most popular thing that's on there from what I see that goes viral back onto IG because I'm on there more is the videos of dancing. Like a. A, a new song comes out or a, a catchy tune is, gets popular because someone may, puts a little cool dance routine together. That one person's video goes viral enough that everybody jumps on board and does the same thing. I mean, but isn't you know, that what is going on? Hilarious. Have you been to the beach? Like, every time I'm at the beach, there's some yeah. group of girls, like, doing some, like, weird, you know, either booty or, like, weird, like, organized thing with a Bro, I've, it. I've seen it in the mall. I'm it's, walking in the store through mall. I'm just yeah. I'm cutting through Macy's and there's like Boy, what a, what a, four it's or like five normal now to see that four or five girls you know getting their phone uh, propped up on the little shelf of jeans or whatever like that and then all four of them like no 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 wait wait no that was too early God damn yeah, it yeah, yeah. Start over here. <laughs> oh this guy just wait 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 you it. didn't say go yet you know I'm just like and, everybody twerk yeah. yeah what a time to be a teenage boy I'll tell you yeah. as, as a as a father I'm just disgusted uh, what are you guys doing oh I know. as a teenage yeah, but my, boy my point excited. of asking you guys is is this something that will become a part of our culture forever is it a like to justin's point is it something that's always been a part of our culture that it's just morphed into something well let me different? ask you this i think let me is. ask you this if you could watch or listen to an audio back then audio cassette or a vhs of you doing some shit in front of the camera at the age of 14 and you watch it now as an adult would you be embarrassed or would you be like that's cool yeah, be embarrassed. Oh, of course. Embarrassed They're going to be embarrassed as shit. Yeah. Guaranteed. Oh, hard, You're yeah. always embarrassed. Is it, when you grow up, everything you do as a teenager on camera, if you record it, thank God. I would, I've been recorded. embarrassed about what we did five years ago on this yeah. podcast. Exactly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching that show. I remember the one you brought up about like all the musicians and they're kind of going into, I think it was like Nick Latchkey or whatever, one of the guys that was in like 98 Degrees or whatever. Oh, oh yeah, the 90s. Lachey. The Lachey. Whatever, <laughs> Latchkey. Whatever the fuck Latchkey kid. I, I know all about it let me Dude, tell you yeah, yeah. Like, boy you were you're yeah, quick on that I have his poster. On, yeah. he was quick on the rihanna call earlier today too, yeah. too. no was... nick lachey was married to uh jessica simpson okay but Come they on, were they was... were like they sat him down and they were showing him like pictures of like his outfits and oh, his yeah, hair his hairs, and yeah. he was just like he was like oh god like he was so mortified you know that's exactly how i would have been i 100 i know yeah. so if you could look at like today like what are the things as a society that we'll look back and be mortified of like you look back and you go like that is just all ridiculous. the tiktok bullshit Bullshit. All of it. Oh, yeah. every one of None them. of it is, yeah, like I would be proud of. Yeah, that's Okay, so that doesn't really shock me that, t you know, kids are doing stuff like, like that's just kids have done that forever. It's just now we have this media Whoa, platform. Hey. It ain't all kids anymore. Well, there you go. <laughs> that's that's the, the part. That's, that's the, the most cringe. That's part. the cringe thing. When I see the forty-something-year-old person who's trying to sell their business or whatever, <laughs> and they're, <laughs> and they're doing their thing, and I'm like, uh -huh. "You're forty-five years old, Brenda." You know? <laughs> Brenda. Come on, Brenda. Brenda. Yeah, you're a you're a health it's always a Brenda. You're a health yeah. professional. Like, you know, <laughs> you don't need to be selling on TikTok like that. Oh yeah, dude. Well, that you know the the knock that I because I, I, we've said this before and I actually always get I do get get DMs when we when we cover this 
And uh, I, I don't know if I shared this on the podcast. Remember when we had that? We had a meeting with a potential partnership investing company thing that we were going to do. Oh, and, I love this. And we were in this meeting. And there's a there's a it's a big boardroom meeting, and there's. A, I mean, we're talking numbers and production. Yeah, yeah. And, I'm talking to a guy who's a multi multi millionaire partner. To, uh, talking and in the room also is Jen Cohen, who we have a lot of respect for her. Very She's brilliant. Very very successful, smart girl. And we're having this kind of deep kind of business talk and going back and forth, like you said, numbers and shit like that. And, there's a girl all the way in the back of the table, and she's obviously kind of ear hustling a little bit. Works for somebody in the, in the room, and then she s- slides in uh, uh, in about 20 minutes in the conversation and starts like grilling me about uh, how many TikTok followers you have. Yeah, yeah, how many TikTok followers we I have. Like, yeah. I was like, I don't fucking yeah. care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it was kind of like that. I kind of had this like snarky response of just like, did she really just side bust this conversation and ask me about TikTok <laughs> like for real? Because it's such a good conversion. Oh rate, man, and she right? kept going around, yeah. and I was just it's, like. Oh, Please. but you know what? That this the generation coming up. The, what you see, or that you see, is that you. And, and by the way, our generation, the older generation, the the you know the Brendas, like you said, are falling for it, thinking that oh my god, that followers well, because means, you get eyes and views. Yes, but it doesn't mean jack. Right. It, it, it doesn't always mean jack, right? Followers and views can, can mean nothing. You could have all these people watching you, and it converts to zero. Yeah, and for uh. the people that are shaking their head, they can't. They don't understand what I'm saying right now. Uh, and the point I made to this girl was like. I would rather have five new emails than one million TikTok followers. Mm-hmm. Like literally, that's how what a discrepancy the the two are as far as how well they convert for your business. It's just a bunch of people looky lose that are looking at you because you do a, a funny dance or something together. Yeah, is is not is not a valued customer. Now, is it possible that you can get a lead from? That? I'm not saying that it can't turn into a lead, but of all the things that you can do within your business, and that was what I had to end up speaking to this girl. Is like, listen. There's a, there's a lot of things I'm not doing. There's a lot of things we could be doing better. But I'll tell you right now, TikTok does not even scratch the fi- top 50 of priorities for us to get better yeah, at. And yeah. it's just the, the, the leads that you get from that in comparison to spending a little more time. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, we can I, I can spend one hour and create another podcast episode that will 10x anything that that, that TikTok could do, or yeah. I could, you could write a white paper that's uh, uh, that we can give away for free with an, a blog attached that will get out and see, you know, that will take three, two or three hours of your time, mm-hmm. that will generate X amount of leads and revenue for the next five years that will trump thousands of people that you gain on. So the time and effort you put into doing that, and so, but there's this because the platform is growing and is so popular. It's it's become this thing that everybody oh, thinks they need to do. The uh, both my kids like uh, they took my phone and they're trying to like you know message uh, Courtney for something and uh, they didn't realize like I've done a few of them right and we've done some for the business for the TikTok and they're like you have TikTok they've made they still make fun of me oh yeah <laughs> like, and I'm like I'm, I'm actually like yeah. Thing. You know, I'm proud that you guys are making fun of me for this because yeah. it's now. I do know that there's. I mean, there's people that are you can do making it. a lot of money. You of can course. do it, but you have to have that attitude of it's not about followers and viewers necessarily. But how you're, do you're I an turn entertainer. This in, really? How do I turn this into a business? There's that famous case of that girl that had x amount of millions of followers on Instagram. She released the T-shirt line thinking she was going to make a ton of money. I think she sold five. Yeah. That's it, you know. Even though she had a million followers or fi- half a million followers, no, she so. had like two million. I remember. I know who you're talking about. I remember that story that was shared that on the podcast. Yeah, it's and just and it, speaking of selling. So we got a, we did an episode earlier where somebody called in live, and we got such a great piece of feedback and compliment, something that we value quite a bit. So this particular individual said to us that they appreciate. So recently, right, there was a workout video that we posted where I was working out in it. And really, it's the first. It's the actually, it's the first video I think that we've ever posted where we're actually showing us working out, showing our physique, so you know, doing that kind of stuff. And this is after being in business for seven years, and we talk about how we really didn't want to, and we don't want to sell fitness that way. We're not trying to sell fitness by showing bodies, by showing how rad we are, how cool we are, because. It's the wrong way to sell fitness. It's part of the problem of the fitness industry. Mm-hmm. And from a business standpoint, it has very little staying power. It's got very it's very low sustainability. I'm only going to- well, It's know, fleeting. You're only gonna very <laughs> fleeting, right? Yeah. And our goal was we want to sell fitness. And so he said, what the person said was, I appreciate the way you guys sell fitness because he was somebody that was obese, like over 400 pounds. And he says, and I could connect with you guys. I didn't feel turned off because you guys- 
you guys sold fitness through information yeah, through or education. make him feel insecure because he's so far away from where we're currently yes. at. Oh, what a great piece. Uh, what a great piece yeah. of feedback because that's hundred percent what it is yeah. from a business standpoint. There's way more sustainability in being able to sell your ideas and communicate and educate and talk about topics in ways that gets people to understand mm -hmm. um, because that lasts forever. It's got real value versus the look at me, Look how ripped I am! How cool I look! Yeah, it's, it's all flash in the pan. Yes, um, and and that's again the even before and afters. Like we sell fitness programs. Like you ask us how many times we've used, even though we have thousands of before and afters that people send us all the time. I get DMs all the time. Mm -hmm. Do we ever use before and afters to sell our programs? Yeah, Almost everybody. Never, everybody, by the way, too, that's in marketing field right now is cringing. Of right course, now. Yeah. <laughs> even our like, own marketing what? team, like, because <laughs> oh, oh, they dude. hammer us all the time for it. Yeah. Now that's not to say that we might not, we'll never use before and afters. But right. the reason why we we stay away, we from didn't want to build so it off of that. Yeah. Let's put it that Correct. way. Correct. Exactly. Correct. Because it's the wrong message. It points to the wrong kind of the bad aspects of the fitness space. And we wanted to build it off of, you know, good information, which again, going back to what you're saying about, you know, media and all that stuff. If you, you got to think it's like fitness, you have to think sustainability because it, you know, making money in the short term is one thing, Yo, building a business that lasts a long that, time. That's is my point thing. to these, the, the people that challenge this, like with TikTok and things like that is like, uh, even if it did, let's just, let's play the game that. You know, okay, we we take a hard turn. We start putting a lot of energy towards these TikTok videos to gain these followers. It starts to generate, let's say, ten thousand dollars a month, which would be an incredible revenue stream that we didn't have. That all of a sudden we have now uh, from this. It's generating that many leads. I I don't want to have to do a dance on on TikTok <laughs> for the rest for the rest of this business's life in order to generate that revenue and keep those leads coming in. I have no Think desire. Isn't that it the go. ultimate like version of dance monkey dance? Well, I you know? like, and we see it's this what it is. We see this uh, YouTube space is really popular with this and I see a lot of the a lot of fitness uh influencers that were started like were that were that were at the very beginning, right? And they they rode the YouTube wave and have had lots of success. I see them all have gone through a, a time of depression or yeah. off YouTube for a while. And mm -hmm. and you can see that they are so torn between, oh my God, like I know that if I make these videos, it generates a, a tremendous amount of money for me. And for a long time, that was a lot of fun. And I enjoyed scaling and the growing of the business, but I'm tired now. And it gets old. And the pressure to keep up this look and the pressure to always be on and to be presenting myself this way all the time, every day, in order just to keep the, the dollars coming in. What a, ugh, yeah. not a business yeah. model you know, I want. You know when I think it would work is when that's your authentic self. You, you're you somebody that dances all the time yeah, anyway. You just do it because you really enjoy it. That's who you yeah. are, right? Then I could see it working, but oftentimes it's not authentic. Now, speaking of dollars and money, so you guys know, obviously, Bezos is the first billionaire. In space, right? Got on his rocket. You guys saw his rocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the penis yeah. rocket or whatever. Yeah, there's all these like comparisons to Doctor Evil's uh, spaceship that went up yeah. and all that. So yeah, as it just like you know, clockwork, the outrage. Oh, this is why we should tax billionaires so much. How dare he spend so much money just so he can go into space? Oh, you know how frustratingly what? annoying this is. <laughs> People are so outraged over somebody spending their own money what do you to go to space. Billionaires to do, and nobody says really. I don't see anybody giving a shit that we spend trillions of dollars dropping bombs overseas on people who are yeah. hiding in caves, and that's our money oh, that we're so inconsistent. The thought process. Yeah, nobody cares about that. Yeah. But this guy spends his own money to go to space, and everybody's so pissed off. <laughs> you know, know the first thing that came to mind for me when I saw this space race going on right now because it wasn't just him, right? So did. Uh, uh, Richard Branson. Richard Branson. Yes. He, and he went up also, right? Yeah. And another one. Did Elon go up yet? No, Elon, uh, no he is, Elon has Right, so we get this whole- this, I have a feeling Elon's going to like, he's going to do something he'll crazy. He'll do something crazy. Now, the yeah. thing that, I, that, I, that I'm so uh, interested to hear as far as what happens over the next six months to a year, because they're going up there with- Average, well, not average, billion other billionaires who can afford yeah. to go up there and stuff, but normal people, not NASA people or people oh, that yeah. work for the government. So, what's going to happen to all the flat earthers? Like, their <laughs> their conspiracy is about to go completely gone because up until this point, if I know, if I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, because you guys are more the conspiracy theory experts over here. 
I mean, it's all based on that. It's this government conspiracy no. and NASA has has been. In, it won't do shit. Well, I know. Oh, you don't think it'll no. it'll explode? It. No, because the conspiracy is literally governments, monarchies, rich people, corporations. You can tell them anything, and yeah. they'll just say that. Yeah. Like, I mean, an eighteen year old boy went up with this last one. So you mean to tell me that this kid's in on the conspiracy and he's going to? You're trying to apply logic. Oh, to, so, so to, this is not going to yeah, work. Yeah, to the people that were actually there. I looked this up. Doug. There was, I, I believe, there was. Uh, a woman who originally was trying to become an astronaut like back in, I don't know, 60s or whatever, but uh, was actually went on that for the first uh, flight. She's like 80 something years old now uh, and was able to actually live out wow. her dream of being able to go uh, to space, cool. which is really cool. Wow, so I, that's really cool. I thought cool. that was awesome. That's rad. No, this is cool. This is interesting to watch. I was There was this funny meme that says that uh, Jeff Bezos' ex- wife has the best divorce uh in history she left with 50 billion dollars and her ex-husband left earth she's like <laughs> <laughs> she's, that's so good yeah. that's pretty good she's, oh. is that her right there yeah wow. what's your name doug wow she looks amazing so did you guys know, look up right? we were talking off air about this yesterday and uh, i made the comment that i heard it was an 11 minute trip did yeah, you, they just touch space in there. Did anyone down. confirm that? Did you guys know if that was true or not? I thought that Dude, was that sounds way too quick, way fast. Even yeah. even if they just went and just going up, touch space and then come back down, or maybe it was just eleven minutes to get up and then whatever time it took to get. But eleven minutes round trip—that sounds crazy. No, I have no idea. Yeah. But I mean, I don't. I know they just went into orb. They basically went out of the atmosphere and back down. So that counts. So who are you guys? Who are you guys rooting for of the three to have the most success with their space? Uh, Elon Musk. Yeah, I know. Elon. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a big Eli's Richard Eli's Branson camp. guy. That's my dude. Elon Musk is my dude. I'm a big Richard Branson guy. I like him a lot, dude. He's, he's cool. He's cool. He's real. Cool. I like him too. Yeah, he's real cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they all they all have their that dude yeah. jumped off skydived off a building. For, I think when he went when he bought out uh, what what cell phone company he buy or whatever. I believe it was the cell phone company with this pro because he's bought so many companies, right? I think it was with the cell phone one. And to launch that, like he 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 jumped off of a building naked. So <laughs> why awesome. would you do that naked? Because it's, it's awesome. Like who does hey, that? Yeah, you're flying through the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Who um, would who would, out of Jeff Bezos, uh, Brant? Uh, what's his name? Richard, Richard Branson. Richard Branson. Elon Musk. Who would you rather smoke a joint with? Uh, Richard Branson. Yeah. Still, the reason why too is because uh, Bezos, because he does. Really I, uh, do of it, the does three, he? although I, I mean, I'm, I'm probably so different than those guys and, and have very little in common with them. I feel like Richard Branson of the three is the the coolest, most down to earth, or the one I would be able to connect with the most. Elon would. As That's much, why I'd want to smoke as a cool as him. Elon is, and because I like Elon Musk a lot too, right? And I would love to just sit there and absorb whatever he had to say, right? I would. Oh, totally, I would throw a weird shit. Yeah, out. I mean, I would. I would love to sit in a room with any of them, right? Yeah. They would all be on the top ten list of guests for sure. Yeah, Richard Branson seems to be the the coolest to me that, and the most down to earth for his. He looks like he's having the most fun. Yeah, I'll, that I'll, too. I'll give you that. Yeah. yeah, the stuff that he does with his companies, like his ideas, like I mean, don't, I mean, don't you guys, love, I love Virgin Airways too. Like, yeah. I love, yeah, yeah, like his is. Do you do you remember what he did that I thought like revolutionized planes too when he did the um, the safety belt thing. So you guys know that I, Virgin was the first one to do that. Like, and you know what is like the most boring, lamest part of like every flight when the, you get on that initial like the the two girls in the middle of the aisle of the stewardess and they do the safety thing and what does everybody do? Tune out. You're on yep, your phone. Yeah. No one's listening to that. And then they turn up the speaker so you have to listen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Or they try and get your attention, especially if you're sitting in spe specific areas, right, or whatever. So they they he made like a a, a music video. And it's haven't you ever been? Have you ever no. noticed that on Virgin? No. Yeah, look it up, Doug. Virgin does a safety music video. I'm sure that would pop pop up, and they, that's what he started. Virgin doing. Air. If, is it Virgin Air? Is that what it's? I don't know. I'm just no, in case. Know. You know, if you Google Virgin. Oh, she was 82. Video. Her name was weird. Wally that's Funk. Was point. her name? She was 82. Wally Funk. Yeah. Wow. Cool. 82. What a, she looked 82, amazing dude. in that picture, dude. Yeah. Yeah. You see a picture of her? Yeah, she looks good. She looks really good. Yeah. Look at her. Yeah, no, especially for eighty-two. I love it when I when, mean, imagine you would have to be in really good health to even get the the, the approval to go up, right? Exactly. That's you gotta awesome. you gotta be yeah. on 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 really really good health to do that. I would think, okay. right? Hey, speaking of uh, of smoking joints and the oldest cannab astronaut. cannabis and all that stuff, did you guys see that Ned has capsules? 
Oh, I did um, hear that. Did they come in yet? They're in. So it, they, it's so instead of doing the the oil, right? Can we talk about that? Is that actually? I told it's Courtney on the it's on the side. Oh, she's it's, super okay, pumped it's because she's not a real big fan of the, the you know the the flavor yeah. uh, necessarily the oil, uh, but that's that's gonna be. They're a game just way, They're just more convenient. Yeah. So I tried it twice now. I love it. Yeah. Ab I absolutely love it. So the bottle the bottle will say take one to two. I'll, I took four just because I like the, the higher dose or whatever. This I don't recommend you do this, but that's what I did. I'm a professional supplement guy. And so. dude, about about forty five minutes <laughs> later, just like clockwork, I get this wonderful elevation in my mood. I'm calm. I'm happy. I feel good. Yeah, it's one of my favorite uh, products supplements uh, to use. But yeah, now I'm it's in capsule form. So is this uh, it right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, turn oh, up. Can wow. we hear it, Doug? Or is it going to piss you off on the podcast here? Yeah. No. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna piss me off. Oh, see, that's smart. Yeah, they added a little uh, flair to it. We get the we get the idea. Yeah, we get right. So I've never I've never flown on Virgin Air. What? No. Oh my god. Nicer, more room. Is it more expensive? Yeah, I have once. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. we flew on Southwest from Hawaii. Right? So what is it? A five-hour flight? That's a long flight for it's, Southwest. It's cheap and, bro, yeah. Bro, no five-hour flight, right? Yeah. So we flew in the morning through lunch to whatever the afternoon. Peanuts and then almonds. Yes. You get a little box <laughs> you of get like... This, <laughs> you get like wheat thins. Yeah. Uh, you get this weird a little cheese fake spread. cheese spread. You get some like gummy, gummy bears. things. And a uh, pretzel mix. I don't know. I just pass along to my kids. Yeah. Like, Here's yeah. your lunch. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Every single thing on here will fuck up my gut. Thank you, Southwest. Yeah, yeah. That's and I don't want to have a fucked up gut on the plane. Oh my god! Every funny. single thing. That's so, funny. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. pretty hilarious. Yeah. So thank God I brought my own, uh, you know, my own. Uh, you stuff. know, ever you know, talking about Ned again and the CBD and stuff. Ever since their Mellow product came out, I actually use the CBD way less. I mm. like I actually use the mellow. The mellow is definitely a daily. I know. And I and yeah. I, again I, I attribute that to I must have been magnesium deficient, right? That's got to be why I think I it's among other things. I it think. seems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am deficient in probably a lot of stuff. No, but, I'm just kidding. But for sure, uh, the the effect that I've had, and I've had people DM me, so I'm not the only one that noticed like this dramatic of a, an mm -hmm. effect on it. It's been so magical for me. I had no idea that I was. They that hit the they hit it out of the ballpark, and you know uh, their sales are crushing. Are they? Yes, people uh, are trying it and then going back and buying. A ton of it. That's why those capsules are interesting. Every new product they've come up with, they just like they've done crushed. Yeah. But okay, so super proud of us for finding them early. I got to bring this up. This is so cool, so funny. I think. Have you guys seen the beds that they're give, putting the athletes in in the Tokyo Olympics? No. no. Okay. No. No. So. What's up with them? <laughs> like what? Like, like the, the hotels that they're staying at? No, or? because they have an Olympic village, so the athletes have to stay there. Is it because of COVID? Restrictions? They always. They always have. Oh, okay. It's always been this way, okay, but yes, okay. with COVID, it's even more so, right? Okay. So these beds, I don't know, Doug, if you can pull them up. Look up Olympic cardboard beds. What okay. cardboard? The beds are made out of cardboard. I'll read this. I'll Dude. I'll read like what they what they say. About Wait a second. Uh, what okay. part? The frame. The frame can't be cardboard. No, no, no. So these beds are called anti-sex beds. Okay. <laughs> what? Okay. They're made of cardboard because they because you get cardboard burns if you try no, to have sex. No, you know, on? there's a big problem apparently with. Athletes banging each other, banging each other yeah. at the Olympics. Uh, do you well, blame them? I mean, is it a problem? I know you got why I'd want to go. It's uh, you got a bunch of coaches' you, problem. Yeah, think about it this way: if you're like, if you're in the running for a medal, you're yeah. like super focused. If you're one of the people like, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, and you're like, I'm fitting. Wow, look at that yeah. sprinter over there. You know, <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> you're like, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's make it happen. So apparently, there's always been problems of STDs and sex and stuff. Really? Yes. So they made these beds out of cardboard. They only support the weight of one person, and it'll break with sudden movements. There, no right there. way. Yeah. This now, is a real thing? Yes. Now, here's how stupid this is, okay? Because Dude, here you have the they? most physically gifted people in yeah, the world. Yeah, I will find a way, bro. Like, they can't, like <laughs> they can't have sex standing up Exactly. Or something. Yeah. Like, get the fuck out of here. You know, but anyway, that was their solution. Let's make cardboard beds so they can't. Bro, bang. that is so. Nobody gives a shit. So They're dumb. all gonna bang anyway. Yeah. That's not gonna stop anybody. That's yeah. so. That's crazy. I know. That I didn't even know that was a like a what we would consider. Oh a yeah, problem. You've never heard stories? No. Okay, so the stories are crazy. That there's like like rampant sex and orgies. Is and it like stuff. you know different countries sort of commingling? Uh, well, I, like, I, I remember, especially everybody. towards the end. So especially so typically from what I've read, I've read articles and stuff where 
people get there and then they're really focused when they're about to compete. Yeah, then you do your, your sport yes. and then you're done. And then you're out and then towards Where's the, the end... Where's the Swedish volleyball team? <laughs> <laughs> like, where are they located? That's where I'm at. You're not going to go, go talk to the shot putters? Nah, shot putters. <laughs> yeah, just, you guys have your own quadrant. Uh, so no, they, it's that'll, that's what'll happen, right? Everybody's kind of towards the end, like people's events are done and they're just at the village hanging out. All that pressure is gone. Yeah. You're around all these fit, you're sexy people. You're high from, yeah, if you, especially if you did well. Yeah, you're like, Hmm, well, yeah. and you have a, a ton in common with these people. Yeah. Yep. You all have a very You're similar devoted, mindset. Completely. And yeah. That's what I mean. You've been so, for four years, you probably haven't dated or done anything. It's been super focused. You've hit this pinnacle. You're done. You're on a sweet release. You're looking for another one. Now you're like, I'm, I can drink. I can hang out. Oh, cool. You know? I'll See, I feel like it, the, the smarter move would be to do something to like, like uh, have condoms in the room or find ways to compliment that. Like, why try and try and fight that? Like, I would try and- And why is like, it a problem? You know, yeah. Like it's, well, you- I, It's weird. I mean, you guys got to remember. At least I remember the, the fitness conventions were- Oh, oh my God, Fitness dude. people are crazy. Yeah, fitness you used to put- You used to take- people, I mean, back in the day- Restaurant industry. It's that's half why they had- they, they canceled the Christmas parties. 24 so to, Fitness canceled the Christmas parties. Because they got so crazy. Crazy. Does, A, every does time. Does ambulances people, there. People like, taking too many drugs. <laughs> yeah. No, bro. Hey, no, seriously. That's your story, Doug. <laughs> every year. That's yeah, they're the, like, I'll never drink, the year, but they're just... I was yeah. there the last year else. that they canceled. The last year it was in, in place, and it was because three ambulances showed yes. up that day. I was Somebody there too. almost died. I must died. have been there too. Yeah, yeah. That was like in 04-ish or so, I think. Oh, wow. no. I was there before. I, I guess they didn't I, mi I missed it. all that hype. Oh, no. Yeah. There were like people pl passing out because they took too many, yeah. who know, God knows what. Wow. Drugs in the bathroom, just... Like people wow. banging each other. It was a blast, Getting <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a PR nightmare, but uh, yeah. it was a blast. Awesome. Dude. I was so heartbroken when they got rid of that. I mean, I remember all, all year you like, hey, like the Olympic athletes, you train so hard for four years, and you're so excited to get to that event. Hey, remember I, how I people you, would dress? <laughs> yes. Oh, dude. I was so excited to the get way, to that event. The way people would dress, fit people. Oh, good. oh, yeah, dude, half yes. naked. People yeah. are ready to like it's yeah. and, and literally. And you have a ton in common with all of them. Like, yep. yeah, no, it's you it all was, work your asses off. Yeah, no, all very really, fit and energetic. Job. Yeah, let them have their fun, man. Jesus, yeah, you're Olympic. Man, You've been sacrificing on. for the four no years. The no fun police shows up again. Hey, yeah. yeah but what, talk about like, did they have a board meeting and some I know. idiot Who's came it? up with yeah, this idea? The asshole goes, like, I have an idea. Yeah. Cardboard, Cardboard beds. Cardboard beds. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. gonna yeah. fuck yeah. then. Yeah. Well, oh yeah. So that's the only place people have sex is in bed. So if you make the bed hard to have sex, and they'll stop. Like, yeah. Who the hell's making this rule? Like, yeah. yeah. No. Now what ends up happening? I can't wait to hear what happens at this because it's gonna be like the the big joke will be how many beds are broken. Dude, hello. Hey, hello. Who doesn't give? Yeah, who shit. wants to smash it first? Yeah, you know? exactly. yeah. Hell, hella <laughs> fit, flexible people. They don't need a bed, dude. They're going <laughs> to be like, hey, there's a sink over there. Let me oh, turn yeah. this over here. And, and you add in the, the element of the fact that they're Jim trying to stop it. it. You always, I mean, it's human nature, right? Like for you to try and rebel. So if, if, if they make a big, that's why I say, why make a big deal about it? Why not just trying to? Well, think about it this way. Imagine you're in this position, right? You're at the Olympics and you're kind of like, now your, your event's gone. You want to talk to the, like these girls or whatever about, you know, whatever. What an easy way to open the conversation. Hey, what about these beds that are going to try and prevent us from having sex? Yeah. Huh? Gonna try. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bro, that would Can be the line you use. Yeah. Hey, what How do you think about those beds that are trying to prevent yeah. us from fucking, huh? Yeah, what yeah. do you think about that? Right? What do you think? Hey, hey, you, would uh, that stop you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would stop you. Are you going to let them do that to us? Are you, are you a rule breaker? Because yeah. I am. I don't know. <laughs> about I you. didn't know I was included in this. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of breaking rules, you guys ever use pre-workout for things other than working out? <laughs> <laughs> like for just a casual drink I, I have I actually have before like uh, if I have a day like so I've, it's been a while since I've done this but it wasn't that long ago because when I moved and I had just like so much house oh, stuff to do for like yard did. work. Yeah, no, oh, yeah. I, like first thing in the morning or like that. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna get Bro. get on one. Legion, I need Legion's it. pulse, oh, I right? Of that. Pulse one of my, is one of the best pre workouts. It's got the right amount of caffeine and theanine. It's got the beta alanine. It's really good. That's exactly what I did. Oh, like, oh I got to move all this stuff. Yeah, better mix up. A that was the last time I did. Is that what you did it for? <laughs> I for did. You? Oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah, that was my the last time I did it was for so. I don't do it a lot. Like it's very rare that I use it and not work. Why are you getting such a because you get it's so amped. I need to make sure it's something that I'm like, I can't take it. Like, oh, I have a busy day today. Let me take some pre-workout. No. Like, that'll ruin my sleep that night. Yeah, yeah. I need to expend that energy if I take it. So I need it. It needs to be something I'm getting ready to go into. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be like four to six yeah. hours of like moving furniture and I'm going to be sweating and like, yeah. Yeah. So. I've also done it for long drives. So I long drives for me are really Keep you rough. Up. Yes. Cause I want to fall asleep in the car. 
So I've done it before where I'll take a scoop of Pulse and then get in the car and listen to some good music and drive fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the trucker move. Yeah, right that's the, driving fast. I mean, as bad as that is, right? But I mean, drive, driving fast always keeps me more awake and alert. If I drive real slow and, and cruising when I'm tired, like that's a, like a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. One of the best things I can do is like, all right, drive fast because then I know I'm like. Yeah. Now, by the way, when mm -hmm. I say fast, like fast now is not that fast. When I was younger, fast was it's fast. Like five miles over the speed. Yeah, now it's like I'm going 80. Like that's not that big of a deal. <laughs> when I was a kid, it was like, you know, cruise control, 120. <laughs> I might do 100. Who do you think drives the fastest out of it? I drive slow today, I feel like. I'm I mean, not a fast mm, driver anymore. You're definitely not. I think I've been with you drive real slow. It depends. Uh, you know, I think dude. you would be the fastest. I probably. Yeah. yeah. Really? You're the yeah. fastest. Doug never drives. I think he's put ten thousand like miles on his places. car since I've since I've known him. Yeah. Do you drive here to work, Doug, or do you walk? Do you <laughs> bike or walk? Yeah. I drive. Oh, okay. Yeah. How, literally though, how, how many miles have you put on that BMW since since you since ten. we've all been together? Because you had it before we all got together, right? Mm, no, you yeah, bought it after. No, 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 no. Oh, you I, bought it after? I bought it after. Oh. I've had it since like twenty sixteen or twenty. What were you driving before that? I don't remember what you were. I driving. had a Jeep Cherokee. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I put on... Doug drives cars until they break. Yeah. He yeah, doesn't buy do. new cars for no reason. Yep. Yeah, I do the same. Yeah, about 30,000 miles, I think. You've put 30 on in the last six, seven uh, years? Maybe 35. Yeah. <laughs> Not much at all. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you know how crazy that is? I'll put like 100 I do that, I do that on, on at least truck. one of my cars yeah. in, in, in a year's time. That's yeah. crazy. Now, well, now because you drive so yeah, far especially now. now. But I mean, like, I, I definitely put them out. This, he puts on a lot oh, of miles dude, too. Yeah, you already have close to a hundred in that there. truck, don't you? Yeah, hundred and yeah. Are you over a hundred? Well, actually, no, I'm not. I'm, you're at eighty I'm pushing it. Yeah, you're at eighty something. Yeah, last time I'm, I'm I saw, I'm pushing it. It's like about ninety ish. Yeah. Wow. What, at what point do you like to sell your car, mileage wise? When it's when when the transmission needs to be replaced, well, so for, you just keep going. For a truck, that's, going. you're coming up on that right now with the truck. Chevys, Chevys, GMCs, they all like typically go over between 100 and 120. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it depends Almost for always. me. Uh, yeah, if good. I have to like yeah. do a major. That's just part of it. Major overhaul. Most of the time, if you're if you you get lucky, you get it before the warrant. If you do like a hundred thousand mile warranty, you get it before it hits that. Mm -hmm. Or I always recommend people that are close to a hundred thousand to extend the warranty until the tranny goes out, and then after that, you yeah, can ride we'll the ride it to the, the wheels fall off because your tranny on that's going to be five to seven thousand so dollars. That's why I like Japanese cars. I don't, that shit well, so it, to me, it would be depend right. So when I had my Toyota Corolla, because I uh, like a Toyota or a Honda. I mean, those things you could bang out those things till they're like. 300,000 miles, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My dad had a, a Toyota pickup that he drove for years. And I think he it, he got it over 300 and something thousand miles and wow. barely had to do anything to this thing. But it was a basic, you know, four cylinder pickup. Now, but I, that I, thing lasted forever. Yeah, has has no your guys' feelings for cars and like how, what you think about them or what you want with them? So that has it always been consistent your whole life? Because like, I know how you feel about yeah. them. Like you're just like whatever. It yeah. gets for me from point A to point B. You could give two shits of the brand. I re I value I like uh, I appreciate cars a lot. I really appreciate them. But owning something that's really expensive and for me feels like a waste of money because I don't care that much. When I own it myself, it's not that big of a deal. I, so I, as long as it's nice and it doesn't break down and it's, you know, then it's all yeah. good. I'm a quality guy. Like I want a real nice quality, like especially if it's a vehicle and that I know will be reliable and, and, and also like I, like I, I want to feel good driving it and everything. So I may spend a bit more, but then I'm, I'm going to ride it till the wheels fall off. So yeah. And now have you always been that way too? Like you've mm -hmm. always, did you always were into cars and like cars? Yeah. And I mean, I worked on my truck through high school and stuff. I had this like, you know, uh, hot rod truck that i was slowly tinkering on and i i drove all the beaters uh, forever when i had to so yeah. i had i had like these old uh, honda like eight, 1980 honda like brown you know the 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 the, the header was like coming off you know the the ceiling of it and you know it was just a total piece of shit but i mean i've i've driven all those and i'm like i don't want to regress you know i'm always like maybe like the next car would be oh, so interesting. Bit, so have you done that like most yeah. of your life like, like every little vehicle ladder. Is a little bit nicer a little bit nicer yeah what about have you did that have you done that as probably every, have yeah, you, like I, I every as life has gone on yeah. you've gotten more what about you doug because you live so many lifetimes like what is are you <laughs> are you someone who has chased <laughs> so, i used to ride a chariot and then yeah. I <laughs> it was a golden chariot though it was nice yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I, i've always been I like nice cars. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I've been a bit reluctant because I'm very practical yeah. to spend a lot of money on a car, but I've upped my quality of cars over the years for sure. Yeah. Well, you, you obviously we know who. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Adam no reason to even ask me on that. How right? much money would you I, have? I, that's, oh God, yeah, so yeah. let's not talk about that. Like, but you know, I get. Uh, we've talked about this before, right? But you so, appreciate it. Yeah. So what I, what has changed about me as the, the young kid that would probably you know as a young kid I probably wanted like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. I have no desire for that anymore. It's, just, it's not practical whatsoever. Uh, and as cool as it may be for a couple of weeks, I know there. I mean, look at I mean, even my Camaro. I don't. I don't drive my Camaro enough uh, enough to really justify probably the price. What justifies that is the value of it. Yeah, now it holds its value. That's yeah, more of an investment. Yeah. yeah so I, I think I, I and I've gotten away from sp spinning frivolously on things that don't give me a lot of joy and fulfillment, or that have like a long lasting joy that I get from it. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? So going on a weekend and blowing a bunch of money to look cool for other people is way in the past for me. Uh, but I do. I, I I really, I love to, I mean, you guys know how much I love to drive. I drive all the time. And time yeah. we go anywhere, I'm the one who drives. So I enjoy driving. I like getting in the car. It makes sense for you and, too. And, yeah. And, and I've, I've I now, drive a lot, I've dude, driven so. enough cars and, and, and levels of, of cars as far as the, the, the luxury of them and the power of them and, you know, being in a, a, a really powerful luxury type of vehicle is yeah. it's a very comfortable. I cool definitely feeling. appreciate it. I definitely uh, appreciate it. Just owning one for myself. I it's the worst it. investment ever. I mean, it, it is. It's an yeah. unless you're doing like a classic car. That's unless a you really a boat get is worse. But it, yes. it, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're, that's about the only thing. Probably the only thing worse than a car. People I'm sure. don't realize that about boats. The biggest waste of money of oh all time. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. No, that, unless you use the shit out of it, it's just a waste. You of can't. It's just like waiting. Even if you live on a goddamn happen. lake, there's still winter. Yeah. yeah. So you can't even like you, at least a car you drive year round. Do you know how many boats there are at the bottom of Lake Tahoe because <laughs> I, of that? I, Have you heard? Is, what is the number on there that? There must be a oh, gajillion. Oh, it's a huge problem because people get insurance on them, and then it's oh, it's time to fucking sink plug. the boat. Yeah, I know. I know people have done that. And and they go and they sink it. Yeah, they pull the plug out, and, then and it's so deep nobody gives. No, nobody's yeah, gonna get yeah, anything. It's, and it's hard to hard, hard to prove otherwise. <laughs> you know, speaking of, <laughs> of 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 water bodies of water and interesting facts. Uh, I, you guys, are you guys watching Shark Week right now? Oh, I a watched little bit a tiny with my bit. kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm watching it. When, and Max is really into like sharks right now. So yeah, uh, ever's the same. Yeah, he loves wow. Sharks. That's, and all he says is wow. So wow, wow. It's yeah. when we're watching the, the sharks. Any guess from you guys on? How many estimated, obviously, because we don't have a precise number, how many estimated great white sharks there are in, in the world? Oh, Ooh, I have no idea. Is, would, it, is it thousands? Is, my, it, like, is it less than 10,000? So my, my buddies and I, we were like speculating on this. And I'm like, you know, I don't think it's, I think it's actually very little, right? That's why it's such a big deal, right? And right. Uh, and I know they're an endangered species, so I know it's going to be on the lower end. Are they endangered? I don't know if they're considered endangered. Yes, yeah. yes. They're considered endangered really? species. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, so I, I, he, my buddy I said, yeah, yeah, I think there's, you know, a few thousand was his guess. And I thought, mm. yeah, no, I, I wasn't sure what it was. Uh, between 200 and 300. That's it. Total? Yeah. That can't be no right. Way. Look, Google fact check. You could literally Douglas. tag all of them. Jeez. They're I think all, they have all in Santa Cruz. They have most of them. I know. Them. They're, yeah, and they're all in Santa Cruz. Uh, you, I mean, I've you'll see them. Yeah. yeah. Not only that, like I told you guys, when we were out there on the catamaran and they were out there feeding and people were swimming on the shore, I'm, we're just like, there's literally sharks right here. Nobody cared. They're just swimming, you know? Wow. wow. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? 218 to 313 I in know the I, world? I had no Dude, idea. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Why do I feel like there's so many? Probably because you see them. Uh, you know, in well, the, I know that po points out how in, crazy that is that we have this huge fear around them. Like the likelihood of a shark attacking you is so small. So small. I know. You know what's funny? The people fear going in the ocean because of getting attacked by a shark when in reality they should fear drowning. The odds of them <laughs> drowning <laughs> much are higher. so much higher. No, much, much higher. Yeah. But I had no idea it was that low. Wow. Right. Now, is that for off the uh, coast of California? It says 300 I mean, white sharks in the region. Oh, well, uh, but I, not in the world. Well, though. check world because yeah, I, yeah. I, I think, oh well, God. no, there's obviously down in the Bahamas and things like that. Check the world because oh, I checked that. That was the number Africa, I came up with. And I, I, I think I, I thought I did world. Maybe right. I didn't do world. Yeah, I don't know. South it Africa seems to be conflicting a... information here. Yeah, because uh, right there says the world right there. Well, that just... says off of Northern California. Oh, right here. Click right there. Uh, uh, left in the world. Click yeah. right there. Doug. Uh, about 3,500. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. Still, still yeah, nothing. Still, still that's nothing, low, right? Lower than I would have expected. Way lower. I, I would have thought tens of thousands or 10,000 or just under 10,000 yeah. with that. So 30. I thought, uh, okay, so I'm glad you figured that out, Doug, because I was obviously way off by yeah, 300. We need to keep these monsters around. Yeah. yeah. No, so, they're so, so fascinating. Dude, they, they, I, I mean, love watching them uh, attack seals. Like they just like launch <laughs> out of the water. It's, oh, it's it's so much raw power. Do you know what what fucks up great whites? 
just what great whites are scared of. Oh, yeah. the killer whales. Orcas. Killer, yeah, killer whales. Yeah. 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 They actually it's will the show, only thing that... They will scared. actually show that if great whites, because they like to stay in one area to hunt... Which they're if, actually related dolphins. They're not whales. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Very smart. <laughs> throw that in there. Yeah. Yeah. I know things. I'll never so forget that. That, that was, was one so of my good. favorite moments of us hanging yeah. out. Great whites will, will have an area for hunting, and then if a if a if a uh, orca shows up, they'll gone and they won't come back. They just won't come back. That's how afraid they are of the wow. orcas. Oh, dude, they rule the sea. Yeah, they'll they, get it for real. They'll they'll hunt and kill great white sharks. Yeah. No, I know that. I mean, they're significantly bigger, right? And they also are smart. Yeah, because because they're dolphins from that family, they're very intelligent and they work together. I mean, you've seen the techniques that they used to hunt. Yeah. I I have seen I have seen them like fuck up. They go under like, ice and like bump. Yeah, uh, make make seal slide seals, off the ice. So yeah, can, and get them, and then they herd them all together. Yeah, now I know I, I know uh, I know that great whites typically are somewhere between twelve and twenty feet, and I think a thousand. You have been feet. watching shark. I have been. Yeah, yeah my, my random facts. I know things. Hey, actually. Hey. <laughs> Look at this. Orcas attacking a great white. Over you can here. find videos like this all over YouTube. Orcas attacking great whites? Yeah. 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 Wild. Uh, yeah. How, how, well, how big is the, how big is the uh, orca? Yeah, the orca. I have no idea. Because I don't know their stats. They're significantly bigger than the, the great white, yeah, right? Yeah, like, oh, yeah. like Much bigger. Two, three X more than them, right? I mean, mm -hmm. which is. You'd think, yeah. It'd be so crazy to see that happen in, in real life. Oh, yeah, they're way more than that. I remember seeing Chamu. Yeah, I mean they're like five x the size of what a uh, what is it? Though? Look at them hunting in pods, so they're, they're they're like hunting together. I tell you, man, if 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 dolphins and orcas that's in Australia, Doug, South Australia. Did yeah. you see what's happening in Sydney, Australia, right now? What the lockdowns? Oh, I know. What? They're going they're going in full on. I think I saw three thousand surrounding cities or locations or some shit i can't remember what, what exactly yeah, it said. They're, 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 that's true then huh was it was that true that you did you see that well maybe fact check me on that too doug that sydney's going into a full lockdown again the, it's um you know, know so know. funny yeah, we have a we have a bummer. forum and we have a lot of people in australia and we have quite a few in the forum and they always talk about how uh, how you know shitty america is and some of that and how great australia is over there and i'm like all their their freedoms are so 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 just as free as we are over here i'm like dude i think it's crazy what's going on with us over here like that's even more crazy i i know there was a video i don't know where it was if it was australian or, or an australia or new zealand where a woman they shut her social media down and then came to her house while mm -hmm. she was with I her kids mm -hmm. to arrest her for mm -hmm. talking about like being opposed to the lockdowns. So. Now they've also had their all their guns taken too, right? Long time ago. Mm -hmm. long, so long time. Yeah. Ago. So does that mean like no residents in Australia? No, or, I don't remember like, what exactly was, what like, it was. Yeah, tell me. Do you I know? don't know exactly what it was, but they they did. There was a big buyback program, and they banned quite a few. Yeah, that would scare me. Like, if you lived in a country where not only did they take all your guns, but then all of a sudden something like this happens. The Second Amendment yep. is the amendment that gives teeth to all the other well, amendments. Well, yeah. This is a clear Bottom example line. of, like, yeah. Look at what's happening in Hong Kong. There's a barrier there. Hong Kong it. was a very free society, very free uh, economically. It's one of the reasons why Hong Kong went from third world country to economic powerhouse when they have no natural resources except for a harbor. Mm -hmm. China now is cracking down. They're protesting like crazy. And I can't imagine that. I can, I can only imagine how different it would be had they had a Second Amendment and they were armed like Americans are. Mm -hmm. Like that would give more pause to that kind of uh, tyranny. That's why that exists in the first place. So yeah. I know people are going to get all fired up about it, but it's true. If 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 people if the government pushed real hard, it would be very different in a country where everybody's very well armed than in a country when people are not armed. That's yeah. it. No. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the show. So go check out one of our sponsors, LMNT. Now they make electrolyte powder that actually works. It's got the right amount of sodium for athletes, for better performance, and for those of you that like to get good pumps in the gym. So if you don't eat a lot of processed foods, especially if you eat a low-carb diet, you need more sodium. Don't believe all the fear-mongering around sodium. It's essential, and it does help with muscle contractions, and like I said, you get better pumps. Head over to LMNT, so go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump and get a free sample pack. We actually got you guys hooked up. Free sample pack. All you got to do is pay for shipping. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from Lamar Second. What are the advantages or disadvantages of alternating sides during an exercise versus doing both sides at the same time? For example, 
when doing a dumbbell press, is it better to do one arm at a time or both arms at once? Oh, they're both good. It's actually mm. almost a different exercise. So let's use the dumbbell press as an example since that's the question, right? So mm -hmm. let's say I'm doing a dumbbell shoulder press. If I do one at, one at a time, that means one arm that's resting, it's not really resting, right? It's holding a position while the other one's pressing, is doing an isometric contraction in that particular position. There's two mm -hmm. ways you could do it. One is with the arm at the bottom while the other one presses, and one is while the arm is at the top while the other one presses. The other difference is because I'm moving a weight on one side, it's requiring more core stability in particular to stabilize because as the lever changes and lengthens, mm -hmm. it's making one side slightly heavier than the other. You really feel this like on a chest press. Like you do one arm at a time on a chest press and you have to stabilize your body from rolling off the That's bench. my favorite part about it is like sort of the anti-rotation component because like when you're doing anything super functional or athletic, um, that's a major uh, factor in how well you're going to be able to, you know, perform and respond uh, based on what types of stress or types of movement that you're, you know, trying to explosively produce. So, uh, I mean, there's lots of carryover in, in terms of like alternating, um, you know, which sides, uh, you know, you're focusing on. I would argue that the the most beneficial is the isometric portion of it and then the time under tension. If you do 10 dumbbell presses with both arms together, uh, time it, uh, how long it takes you to do that. Mm -hmm. If you do the same thing, alternating, so 10 and 10 on your side, which mm -hmm. basically means you get to 20 reps, figure out the time. Mm -hmm. You're going to you're going to dramatically increase the time under tension for the same muscle and you're also going to incorporate a isometric portion that you don't really get in a in a typical you know, both arms pressing. So I think it's a great way to, and when else do the, does the average person include isometrics? Very, very rare. And we've talked about at nauseum, the benefits of isometric training mm -hmm. and very few people do it. This is a great way to incorporate it in your training. Um, and to like Sal said, you could, and you could do the isometric contraction at the top of the, the rep or at the bottom of the rep. And that goes for shoulder pressing and curling. And I mean, almost every exercise you can incorporate this. So there's tremendous value in it, uh, especially if you never do it. So if you do most of your exercises, both arms together all the time, um, then incorporating, uh, you know, alternate, which you're going to have to lighten the load yep. mm -hmm. because of the increased time under tension. And the stability. It's yeah. harder to go as heavy when you're alternating. Oh, now, yeah. does that make it a better exercise? No. No. It makes it a different exercise. In fact, if I were to... The difference between barbell exercises and dumbbell exercises is very similar to the difference between dumbbell and alternating dumbbell exercises. So if you were to rank them in terms of amount of weight you can lift and total force generated, and then you add in stability and control and tension and time under tension, you can see that it's like barbell training, dumbbell training, alternate dumbbell training. So, you know, obviously with barbells, I can use more weight, generate more power, higher load, uh, but I'm not going to have as much time under tension typically. I'm not going to have as much of a stability component. You go to dumbbells, not as much weight, but there's more stability involved. Then I go to alternating, even lower weight, even more stability involved. All of them have value. So it's it's. I think it's important to incorporate them all differently. I mean, when I alternate with dumbbells, I also can isolate and squeeze the muscle that I'm really working on. Like I'll give you an example. One of my favorite alternating exercises with dumbbells is a dumbbell row. So I'll bend over with two dumbbells, I'll bring one up, squeeze that lat and that side, hold that, and then row the other one up and then bring the other one down and squeeze that the other side. So I'm constantly focusing on the squeeze with that movement. So the follow-up question or what should be the follow-up question to this is how do I incorporate this into my, my training program? And this is uh, uh, what I do it personally is very similar to how Sal, you talked not that long ago on the podcast of, you know, when you're in a cut, how you like to do lightweight and high reps. So mm -hmm. I like to do this like like maybe if I overreached and I've been, maybe I'm in a strength phase and I trained really heavy and I'm back on that muscle group and I'm yeah. still kind of sore. So mm -hmm. I don't want to go, I don't want to load really heavy again. So I'll go a much lighter weight and focus on con control and the isometric portion of the exercise and doing things like this because I know that I'm going to have to significantly reduce the weight to do this. So I may not do as much, much muscle damage as I would if I was heavy loading uh, or doing both dumbbells together. 
So that's kind of how I would do it. And really, it's uh, if it's something you never do, there's tremendous value in it. If you already incorporate it into your routine or that's how you always train, then training barbell movements are going to be uh, very beneficial to that person. So it's whatever you're doing the least. Next question is from S Powers 28. What are your thoughts on full body workouts on consecutive days? You can do this so long, typically, as you modify the intensity appropriately. So, in fact, you can work out your whole body every single day. Mm -hmm. I mean, seven days a week if you wanted to. But it's not hard seven days a week. Usually what that would look like is two or three hard workouts with, you know, four or, you know, or, or, or five uh, easier uh, full body workouts. So the intensity has to be modified. But you can definitely train things back to back on consecutive days and get great results. If you don't modify the intensity, you're in for some trouble. Typically, you train hard everything all the time without allowing some kind of recovery. You're probably going to run into some problems. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me a lot of like some jobs that are really rigorous and, and physical. Uh, I mean, you have to get up and you do that job every single day, and your body starts to get adapted and really good at it. Um, but you know, there's a way to do this. It's all like intensity based in terms of how beneficial it is for you and like how you can kind of scale that, but to, to be able to keep reinforcing and teaching these movements to your body is going to do you actually some good and actually get stronger in a lot of these movements as a result, as so, long as that's taken into account. So if I know that I'm going to be training two days in a row, I would actually split my routine up. So I do this a lot with MAPS Anabolic. So I'm following like a MAPS Anabolic-esque routine right now, right? And I, I know that this week I'm going to be able to get, you know, five days or six days in the gym. And so what I might do is I might take the full body routine and, and cut it in half. And on Monday, do the first half of it. On Tuesday, do the upper second lower, half of it. Upper lower, Yeah, and, and go upper, lower, upper, lower. That's so what just, I'm doing right now. Yeah, so, uh, and then on day, weeks where I only have three days I can make it to the gym, then I follow the more traditional way that it was written. So that's one of the ways that you can modify the program. So if I know that, right? So if I know ahead of time, I'm going to be going back-to-back -back days of training, I'll normally split the body up on that. Otherwise, you would have to modify, like you're saying, of like really scale back on the intensity. Or the other option I do is like, let's say I trained a full body. I didn't know that I'd have availability to work out again on Tuesday, so I'm getting this extra day in. But then I'm like, oh man, I kind of hit most of everything on this. That's where I might focus on a lagging body part or maybe do core or turn it into a mobility day. So that might be how I call an audible when I know I just did a full body uh, workout the day before, what I might do the next day. Yeah, I'm a huge uh, proponent of frequency. I think frequency, for a long time at least, uh, training your body parts frequently was something uh, that was talked down upon. Mm -hmm. It was all about intensity and about having lots of days of rest. I think frequency is phenomenal. I think practicing things often is excellent for building muscle, improving strength, improving performance. You just got to modify the intensity. If the intensity is appropriate, meaning some days are hard, some days are moderately hard, other days are very easy, this frequency can be an extremely powerful tool. It really trains the central nervous system in effective ways. It gets you to learn movement very well. Yeah. And it sends a constant muscle building signal. Of course, the loud ones with the hard workouts and low ones with the light workouts. Nonetheless, you're still getting this signal sent to the body to build on a pretty regular basis. So when it comes to frequency, like this, by the way, is something I changed my mind on about halfway through my career. I was the intensity and lots of rest person before. When I started experimenting with frequency with my clients first and then myself, it was like game changer. Well, it's really the secret sauce of most of our programs is the addition of the frequency builders. And we find that in different forms based off the different goals that we sort of engineer in there. But I mean, this is something that, you know, world-class strength coaches know about. Oh, and yeah. so they, they call it different things. Like, I know I've heard like even Corey Schlesinger calls it like a microdosing, you know, intensity versus, you know, like the macro dose and like what that you know scale looks like and but it's always related to you know total body movement and you know practicing a lot of these types of strength moves next question is from camp bowl assuming you've already hit your protein target for the day what is the difference between getting the rest of your calories from carbs or fat not, yeah, this is not, a really good not question a lot different unless you're really low on your fat yeah so uh, first off, fat and protein are essential. So that means that if you don't hit at least your essential requirements for fat and protein, those are always a priority because your body cannot produce 
essential fatty acids and it cannot produce uh, essential amino acids, which come from protein. So if you don't hit those minimums, you can be uh, have a lot of that's trouble. The, and that's the only concern I would ever have with this client. So yeah. if this client came to me and said, hey, Adam, I hit my protein intake. I want to have more carbs today. Is that okay? So long as you're hitting the minimum requirements for your fats. Like, that's where this is. Then it becomes an issue. Like So if someone said, uh, let's say they had most their uh, uh, protein came from you know, whey protein or a very lean source of of meat and eggs. Well, eggs has got some good amount of fat in it. Let's just say maybe egg whites. Yeah, let's say you just have a really low. Let's say their their total fat for the day for you know a male that's 180 pounds is you know 20 grams of fat is all they've had, and then they're like, can I just fill the rest up with carbs? No, I would push that person in the direction of of filling it up with fat. So. Yeah, I agree. Now, if so long as you've hit your essential numbers. Um, this is really a personal preference thing. I tend to do better with fat than I do with carbohydrates. Now, I know people who are the opposite, mm -hmm. uh, that they do better with carbohydrates uh, over fats. So it's really up to you. Now, what's the difference between the two besides personal preference? Carbs, so long as you hit your essential fats, carbs tend to uh, contribute to performance better. Uh, so if I have higher carbs, so long as I digest them well and I feel good, I'm going to notice better performance from that usually uh, than I will from from fats. Um, and then there's cases where I like I've had clients, female clients in particular, where we're noticing hormone and skin issues and hair issues. Where I'm going to tell them let's let's prioritize the fat. That tends to help better more with your joints and your skin and your nails and your hair than your carbohydrates. But uh, aside from the essential component, really it's a personal preference thing. Like what makes you feel better? What makes you perform better? And then, you know, go for that. This is why one of my favorite tips to, to teach somebody about nutrition or help somebody out with their diet without overcomplicating it is actually having them just focus on protein first. If you can get a client to just hit their protein targets and then you're, you're less worried about you know, how many grams of carbs or how many grams of fat they necessarily yeah. have for the rest of the day, you're typically okay. The yeah. only time that this becomes an issue is if and only if that person grossly under eats fat and so they're not even hitting their minimum requirements. But if you do a good job of kind of ebb and flow on, you know, the last few days I've had like higher fat and then so today I'm going to go lower fat and more carbohydrate and you kind of seesaw back and forth and mm -hmm. I think you're going to be totally fine. And it's like you said, total preference. Also what I'm trying to do, if I'm trying to gain in bulk, I'm going to lean more towards car carbohydrates. I find I can keep eating carbs more where fat seems to be a little more satiating for me. So if I'm trying to be more restrictive and stay lower calorie, I hit my pro. So let's say I'm on a leaning out phase. I might go protein. I hit my protein. The rest of my calories, I might go after fat. That way it kind of suppresses my appetite a little bit and I don't want to eat more. If the opposite is true, I'm trying to get bigger and I'm trying to gain weight and I hit my protein target and I've got calories left, I might load it up with carbs so that my I want to eat more and it's easier to eat yeah. more. Now, you know what I found in this situation when people are like, okay, cool, I'm going to fill it with carbs. Uh, carbs are really easy to, to throw in with junk food if you're just looking for carbs. Yeah. Like if you're just looking for fat with junk food, typically it also comes along with carbs. But when you're looking for just carbs, I've seen people do this where they're like, oh, I'm going to have you know, cereal or I'm going to eat just a, you know, just things that tend to be in boxes and wrappers. So keep that in mind as well. Like if you're just looking to fill calories, don't do it with garbage foods or foods that might uh, cause digestive issues because that kind of defeats the purpose. Question is from Shelby Jutton. What advice would you give someone who has consistently been training six days a week? I'm scared to back off in fear of lo losing progress or regaining fat because I'm not as active. Yeah, here's the the fascinating case of doing less is more. And you see this often with people who tend to push too much. Yep. I've had so many people I've trained where they're in this situation, they're working out six days a week or seven days a week, and they're doing too much, and we scale them back. And rather than gaining body fat and losing muscle, the opposite happens. They build muscle because what they were doing before was too much. And then as they build the muscle, because their muscle is burning more calories, they have a faster metabolism, mm -hmm. they actually get leaner. So I know progressive resistance and progressive overload and adding volume, those are all part of building muscle. But at some point, you get diminishing returns. And sometimes you're doing too much. Doing less oftentimes can produce better results. I liked sort of the basic idea of if you took like a week vacation and you didn't train or do anything and then you come back and you feel like 
the most energy, the most strength you've had in a long time, you know, as sort of a bit of a gauge of, wow, I, I guess, you know, that was probably yep. a bit more of demand than I realized I was placing on my body. But you just got to kind of, you know, take a leap of faith and, and, and try it out. If, if that's something you're considering and try kind of scaling back for a while, you'll know, like your body's going to kind of, uh, you know, reveal that to you. So uh, I dealt with this a lot, uh, especially with competitors. Um, this was common. I, I get a hold of a competitor and many times I would assess their eating and training and many times they were overtraining and I had to scale them back from six to seven days a week to like a MAPS anabolic type of program. And this exact would be the concern. This is they're freaking out like, oh my God, I trained six, seven days a week. You're going to cut that in half. Uh, am I going to put on all this body fat? One of the one of the strategies that I used to use to help mitigate that, or the potential of that happening, is I would just replace the days that they, the other three days that they're no longer lifting more with activity, walking, mobility. That way, the the calorie expenditure is still up there, but the training volume is being changed. Also, mm -hmm. mentally for them, they're doing right something. exactly. They're still doing something. So, I, what I'd say to that that client, I'd say, listen, you don't have to stop going to the gym. Go to the gym. Still go your six days, your seven. If you like that, that's part of your routine. Um, I, I respect that and I understand, like, do it. Like, I, li I like that you've made that a part of your lifestyle. But now what I'm asking you to do is now on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I want it to be all mobility and walking on the treadmill for that hour. And so that's, and then they're also getting some calorie expenditure there. So, because if you take somebody who's going six days a week, training very hard, high volume, and you cut them to three, there's definitely going to be a difference in yeah, they're, calorie. They're a busy person with a busy mindset. So right. got to make that productive. And they're still. also, yeah. their body's also adapted to a pretty high calorie burn. And if you don't adjust the, the calories for that difference, then there is a potential that they will put on a little bit of body fat after that. One of the ways, like I said, to mitigate that is to keeping the activity level still up there, but you're changing the type of activity. You're scaling back the intense high volume training that they were doing to give them something that their body's probably going to respond better to, like a three day a week mm -hmm. anabolic type of full body routine. Mm -hmm. But then you're also allowing them to still move and have activity. So there's not such a discrepancy in the calorie. Yeah, but sometimes there's a paradox that happens, right? Mm -hmm. So some, and this, I've had this happen happen many times where somebody's working out six days a week. It's too much. I cut them down to three days a week of resistance training. So they're doing less activity, but because the three days a week built more muscle on their body. Well, I'll explain that paradox. You know that the, who that client is, is the client who also under eats. So they're, they're not, they're also, they're over training and they're under eating. They so the, hand hand so just them. by cutting the days, now their calories are probably about where they should be. And the less activity is actually extremely beneficial because now they're recovering better right now and they're building more muscle. Which then <laughs> results in getting leaner. So yeah, absolutely. So th that is a, that's a very common paradox that happens. And as a coach, that's what you're looking for. So when I'm assessing the diet and the training, I'm looking at, is this person just, tr I think, training too much? Uh, but they have a good a good hold of uh, getting enough nutrition and they're eating a good amount of calories, or are they overtraining and under eating? If they're overtraining and under eating, then that advice is the advice I give. We drop down to two or three days a week of, of weight training, and I'm not even worried about activity the rest of the time. But if I know that you're eating a good amount of calories, you're feeding the body really well, you got a good calorie intake, say if this is a female that's asking, say she's eating, I looked at her, her profile real quick too, let's pretend she's eating somewhere between 2,400 and 2,800 calories a day, and she's just training six days a week, I might just modify that. But if she was eating 1,500 calories, really, really low, and over training, I may not ask her to do the extra activity. I might just say, you know what you need to do? You need to right. scale back on that let's volume. Put the on. Yeah, let's scale that back and actually not do any extra activity. And then I'd actually want her to increase calories. And then I, if I do any move, that's when I'll start doing movement yeah, to you know, kind of counter that. You know, what's interesting mm -hmm. too about this is if you were to take just the average person, a majority of the average people uh, would build more muscle and get better results working out three days a week than six days a week. Just yeah. It just... That's just uh, statistically, I would say that's one hundred percent true. Just an adequate recovery focus. Yeah, most way. most people would do better with that. The people that do well six days a week uh, have, first of all, the programming has to be really really good because it's a lot of exercise, and they have to they typically are, are have been working out for a while. They're relatively advanced. They've got new, good nutrition. They got a good hold of things. They're not the average person. They tend to be much a little bit more advanced. But the average person, I mean, I wouldn't take the average person who wants to build muscle and have them train six days a week. Usually I'm doing a good three-day-a-week routine. I mean, shit, when Doug hired me as a coach, uh, he had exercise experience. I, he was lifting twice a week. It was two days a week that he started. And he did two days a week for a year before he moved up to three days a week. 
Um, and now, he, of course, he follows our programs and he'll train upwards of four or five, six days a week. But it took a while. So the, here's the thing with exercise. Uh, the right dose is going to get you the best results. And the right dose is individualized. The more than that or less than that will get you there slower. So always remember that. Look, if you like our content, if you like our information, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. So much free stuff there. Go check it out. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. The fact that eating healthy is more expensive as a myth. This is largely due to people compare processed or fast foods in this category. And so they say, oh, if I eat at that healthy restaurant versus that unhealthy restaurant, boy, is that more expensive. Don't look at processed foods 